Hey guys, this is Austin, and I'm back with another microphone test video for you guys. Today I'm reviewing this guy or this guy. This is the MXL 550 as requested by our viewer, Sir Nigel Gaming Cogs. And this is part one of two of a review series where I will be doing the 550 and the 551 as well. For this video, I'm connecting the microphone to my computer using the Focusrite Scarlett Solo and the 48 volts phantom power is switched on. And I do need to note, this will not work by plugging directly into your computer. You need an interface or a phantom power supply to get it to turn on at all. And lastly, if you are interested in this microphone set, it'll set you back about $77 on Amazon. And as per usual, link in the description. So now let's go ahead and talk about what you get in the box. You're obviously going to get the microphone. You also get the microphone mount. Unfortunately, it does not come with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. So if you're connecting it to a boom arm, you need to make sure you have one. It also comes with a hard shell carrying case. You get a microfiber cloth to clean your microphones. Obviously you get documentation as well as a one year warranty. So as far as the build quality, I think this thing feels pretty nice. It has an all metal construction, a metal grill, and it does have a little bit of weight to it as well. The microphone mount is plastic and it provides no shock absorption, so I'm not a big fan of it. And if you're going to be using this in a studio setting, I would recommend getting a shock mount. And the plastic carrying case feels really nice and I think it will provide sufficient uh, protection for the microphones. So as far as the specifications, this microphone has a frequency response of 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It has a cardioid polar pattern, which we'll test in a second. And it also has a phantom power requirement of 48 volts plus or minus four volts. The microphone also also has a max SPL of 130 decibels, it has an impedance of 200 ohms, and it has a signal to noise ratio of 80 decibels. So now I'm speaking into the microphone and spinning it around to determine what the actual polar pattern is and how the frequency response and sound changes as we move into different orientations around the microphone's capsule. Okay, now I am banging on the keyboard directly behind the microphone to determine how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I am about one foot away from the MXL 550. Now I am about two feet away from the MXL 550. Now I'm about four feet away from the MXL 550. I get up at seven, yeah, and I'll go to work at nine. So overall, I actually think this is a really nice sounding microphone. On the acoustic guitar and the electric, it had a warmer sound than I typically go for, but I actually liked it. And on the voice, I thought it sounded absolutely great. When I was banging on the keyboard and when I got farther away, it did tend to pick up a little bit of background noise, but that's because this isn't designed as a gaming microphone. This is designed as an entry level studio microphone. So if you're a gamer, I don't necessarily think I would recommend it, but if you are starting up a small studio, if you're doing covers on YouTube or you want to just record music for fun, I think this is an absolutely great option, especially considering it's about $77 for this microphone as well as the 991. All right, guys, well, I guess that will do it. If you have any more questions about this microphone, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below and I'll try to get back to you. If you found this fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up. If you thought it sucked a big bag of thumbs down if you want more of these videos subscribe by clicking the logo in the corner and don't forget to vote for the microphones you want reviewed next as well as follow me on every single social media site out there links to everything in the description down below thank you guys for watching i'll see y'all later bye